that thing in the back of my mind. You know, I always wanted that little side thing going on that, you know, I, I wanted to build something, but you know, I just, you know, I didn't have at that time the confidence to jump, jump in the deep end. And so, you know, it, it for me, you know, it kind of took that, that hard event of, you know, a big layoff to, to actually, you know, force me to do it. So if you don't mind me asking then what, what was the, um, point that instilled that confidence in you for you to make the jump? Uh, it was a matter of necessity. <laughs> you know, actually, okay. you know, it's like, you know, when, when you go from the salary to nothing, it's like, gotcha. okay. And, and, you know, having that side thing going on, then it's like, okay, do I jump back in to another corporate job, which I was miserable in, or do I just try to go ahead and build this, you know, and, and opportunity, you know, the opportunity was there is like, well, you know, I have nothing else going. And so, right. That, that's sort of, you know, where, where my journey began was, you know, having nothing else but what I had been doing as a side hustle, so to speak, and just, you know, sort of took that full time. Right on. Cool. Cool, man. Then, you know, it's, as, as it's turned out, has been, been a huge blessing that, you know, I, I've been able to discover, you know, the, the freedom in it, which, which is huge. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you, you can work that nine to five job, you know, the big J-O-B, as they say. Or you know, making somebody else rich for their vision, or you can you can work on your own vision, and no, you know that's that, that's sort of you know what it came to at the end of the day was you know was I going to work for somebody else to to make their dream happen, or was I going to make my own? Nice, right on. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what compelled you to to start up Stars and Stripes? I mean, was 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 that just something that you finally decided you know this has to happen? Yeah, it was. <clears throat> as I was, I've been artistic most, uh, most of my life. And, uh, I wanted something to the, so with the shirts and stuff, the designs I saw for a very long time were just your, your stereotypical, uh, shirts that you would see at Walmart mm -hmm. or just a U.S. army veteran or stuff like that. And I never like bought onto those. I always, I always thought that some of the most ingenious and outside the box, problem solvers and thinkers were, were people I knew in the service. And I was like, there has to be a different kind of creative outlet to uh, send this positive message or just show us camaraderie about something and, and not be so like cliche and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And so I started just kind of getting out there and drawing and a couple designs I came up with, I really liked and started to put them on shirts and then uh, started to, you know, go talk to people and sell some of the shirts. And it was, positively received and you know just kind of started to build off that but it was just the uh, it all started with the fundamentals of me wanting to uh artistically express um my experience of, of iraq and being in the military and and the men and women i serve with and then kind of the whole culture of of the military demographic whether it be the tattoos or whether it be you know loving cars or whether it be just just being free and just going to do whatever, man. I just, I thought there was a good, uh, a good market for that. And it was something that was going to make me bring my artistic levels, uh, constantly up to the next level to, you know, to keep business coming in. So would you say that, um, there's another profession out there other than what you're doing that you'd like to attempt or you're pretty, pretty good where you, where you are? Well, for a very long time, uh, in addition to doing the shirt stuff, I, <clears throat> I was a pro wrestler and I wanted to very much get signed by, by WWE. And now I'm uh, 36 and I know the days of me doing that are, are more towards the end than the beginning. So uh, unless, unless that were to happen, and we should know in the next, I would say, year or two years at the absolute most, if that will, um, I've already kind of started just kind of focus on, on this is what I, I think uh, life may have me uh, meant to be. Um, I'll tell you this, it's a lot easier on my body than the ring. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> um, and I'm with my, my kids all the time, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think this is uh, business wise. This is a, uh, this is definitely a business that I can see uh, spending the rest of my, my, my days with doing and just having fun with it and meeting fun people and just kind of letting it roll. And, um, you know, create, creating that legacy as, as we started this whole podcast out with. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is a lot easier uh, on the body, like I say. Yeah, I'm not a smart chicken anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So uh, what would you say uh, your greatest strength is, Jan? I think my greatest, my greatest strength was to not crack and always remain cool when times get tough. That, um, and this is a good message for any of the young entrepreneurs out there, that is essential. There's, there's times where it's like you're trying to figure out where the next sale is going to come from to, for the next one, and the shirt design is going to come from, um, and you can be dealing with personal issues on top of that, and you have to know how to keep a level head and not let uh, emotions and the situations around you uh, over, overwhelm you and, and ruin you. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's if I got stuff going at home that's really bad, I can't take that out on a customer or vice versa. You know, you got to sure, – sure. You always got to make sure you keep a level head, just stay focused and, 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 and just kind of stay cool and, and you'll get through it. You always will get through it. The dark, the dark days, the bad times, they always end. Uh, but don't let them, don't have them end when you have uh, strained or broken a relationship that didn't need to be because you couldn't keep your head right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so kind of on the, the flip side of that, what would you say your greatest weakness then would be? I would say my greatest weakness is definitely I probably have gone above and beyond for people that didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you want to help, you want to help people, you want to do the right thing and uh, times it can bite you. And I know uh, from the business standpoint, um, I've given people more time than I should have. And from the professional standpoint, I've listened to people longer than they were entitled to. And uh, both have cost me. Uh, both have cost me relationships, friendships. Um, and it's, you know, it's just all part of the growing, I guess. But that would be my biggest weakness. I, give, I have a tendency to give people more, more time and attention uh, than, that, than I should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. You know, I know I've, I've struggled with that one myself. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you, you feel like they're, there is going to be a value in it, but then before long you just discover, you know, it really, it's, it's more them sucking from you than giving back. And so, you know, it's always, always has to be, you know, reciprocal. No, you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So we, we all had that, that kind of place that we go to, to get our best ideas. You know, some, you know, some people, you know, it's latrine, you know, not saying that's where my best ideas come from, but yeah, you know, some people it's walking the dog or being out in the woods. Where where's that place that you go to to get your ideas? Well, it's a combo of a couple of things. It would be it would be the the gym. I go to the gym five six days a week, and that's yeah. that's yeah. always like my place to to clear my head. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I'll say other than that, I would. I mean, it's just just walking around. Uh, you know, I'm I'm in I'm in Waco, Texas, and I, I'm. Uh, I'm all around though. I end up in Dallas. I end up in Austin mm-hmm. and just walking around and checking stuff and you see stuff and all of a sudden it starts planting seeds in you. And I got, you know, my phone is full of just random pictures. They're like, well, this is so random. Why would he have this kind of picture? But in my head, I'm like, well, this would be cool if I could pair this with this. And if I were to draw this and put mm-hmm. a skull here and do something like I can, and then all of a sudden start designs start kind of coming together and, sure, and sure. start kind of attaching itself uh, organically. And then, then I have something really cool that I could throw on a shirt and, and release. Okay. Okay. So I mean, your, so your best ideas are just in the world, you know, just wherever you are it is kind of stream kind of flows in, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Uh, I would say that helps being in an area like walking around an area like Dallas or Austin, where you have such an eclectic taste of, of uh, design and, uh, and art. Um, you know, in contrast to a place like Waco, which Waco is, is definitely up and coming, but is not in Austin or Dallas. And so, you know, walking around here, you're not going to get the same inspiration as you would in one of those cities. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so if you were to describe uh, from a very high level, uh, what, what goes on behind the scenes uh, with your business? Uh, what, how would you describe that? Putting out fires left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a high level. It's it's a daily thing. It's putting out orders. It's uh, customer service if a customer has a question, or uh, you know, because I, as I mentioned, you know, we just helped produce this documentary, and so uh, a lot of my time now has been dealing with uh, different media from that. We just got covered by Rolling Stone. Um, sweet, sweet. And then uh, you know, then dealing with 
uh, the, the shirt printers. Some of my shirts I print in-house and some there's a different uh, veteran-owned printing company that if it's more advanced, mm -hmm. uh, they do it because they do an amazing job. Uh, so it's, you know, dealing with that making sure all the money's right. You know, on average, uh, if I'm, I'm lucky for an eight hour day, I usually will work about 16 hours a day, but the go, the give and take of that is that at the end of the day, I'm my own boss and I have no problem working 16 hours to get this thing going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's very true. That's, that's one of the things, especially, you know, a starting out entrepreneur needs to realize is that, you know, they're not going to be able to work less by starting from themselves. No, you know, no, in, no, no, in the beginning, you're going to be working a whole lot more, but you know, the, the rewards will, will come in and eventually, you know, you can, you can dial back and you know, have somebody else, you know, basically driving the bus for you while you mm -hmm. can, can sit back and, you know, enjoy the things like, you know, spending time with the kids, spending time with family a lot more and, you know, doing the things that, that really give quality of life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Man. So to kind of uh, wind up our, our time this, uh, today, uh, if you can uh, tell me something about you that, that is, uh, you know, kind of, this is kind of a trivia question. Tell me something about yourself that nobody knows. Nobody knows. It could be anything. Yeah, yeah anything. Oh, uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Well, I got I got some. Just give me a second here. This is he's really threw me on this one. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. I got one. Okay. Uh, Nobody, not even my kids know this one. Uh, the only thing I have left on my bucket list to do in my life mm -hmm. is to jump from the edge of space. Really? Yes. Really? Uh, if you remember like five years ago, I want to say Felix Baumgartner, uh, he is a uh, stuntman and extreme uh, athlete. And he literally sky dove from the edge of space. And when I saw that, I was like, I need to do that in my life. And I've never told anybody about it. Not me, my closest mm -hmm. friends. So your, your podcast is getting exclusive. That is right. the, the last bucket list I have left to do uh, in my life is to skydive from the edge of space. Well, yeah, I, I think I just added one to my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, people that know me know I'm, I'm a total adrenaline junkie. You know, I, I just can't get enough adrenaline. So, you know, that, that sounds pretty good. You know, frost, frosted goggles and everything. I mean, that, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, that'll, definitely, that'll definitely kick your adrenaline up. <laughs> hey, ooh, ooh. Well, Jan, guys, yeah, it's, it's been great being able to talk to you this morning, get to dig in, get to know you a little bit. And, yeah, people that are listening, that they need to be able to reach out to you. So uh, what's, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you, get a hold of, get a hold of your stuff, get, you know, get their shirts on their body? How they do that, man? You can you can reach me a couple different ways. Um, you can reach me on the on the company website, scarsandstripes.com. That's S C A R S and stripes.com. Uh, on Instagram, you can find us at Scars Stripes LLC, uh, and Facebook Scars and Stripes LLC. Um, either way, I have all the links to my phone, and I get back to everybody as soon as I can. Um, so feel free to uh, to hit me up. And uh, I believe if you are in the Central Texas area in August, we will, uh, Scars and Stripes will be out. We're helping sponsoring the Silkies hike um, to end veteran suicide. So we'll be out there with our stand and a couple of the Scars models. Girls will be out there and we'll be selling shirts and that stuff. Feel free to say hi. But that would probably be the best way to get a hold of me. Cool, cool. Yeah, and put your silkies on. Do, you know, hike for a good cause. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Jan, you know, it's been, been a pleasure and an honor to have you on the program. And you know, if you get a chance you know, down the road, let's, let's get you back on again and you know, catch up. I'm very honored uh, to be here. It's very humbling. Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate it a lot. It's been, been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Right, take care.